submitted. Uh, and uh, there's no uh, public forum presentations today, but we do have a deputation by appointment on item 29. Could I invite Peter Richardson, the co-convener of Aotearoa Water Action, uh, to present his deputation. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Ah, um, kia ora and welcome. Kia ora. Uh, that wasn't a good start, Madam Mayor. Water Action. <laughs> Um, so I've got a, um, a deputation here, and um, uh, I'll present that. First of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate Council for um, taking this up and um, taking the initiative in dealing with this directly with, uh, with ECAN and these issues. Um, so first of all, which will be fairly obvious, we support measures to ensure continued and enhanced protection of Christchurch's drinking water supplies, uh, especially from over-extraction by uh, water mining companies. Uh, water mining is an activity that globally has demonstrated itself to be highly destructive of community rights to water security uh, and to the environment. As a worldwide industry, it's experiencing year-on-year -year growth of around 10%, and that growth is expected to continue indefinitely. Water mining industry leaders have declared that tap water and community water supplies are the number one threat to the bottled water industry. And understanding of that fundamental point needs to inform Council's response to efforts by the water mining industry to expand in Christchurch. AWA supports in principle Council's proposal that aquifers within the Christchurch West Melton zone be recognised as distinct water bodies, and that was one of your submissions, I think, to ECAN. We would, however, urge that Council take an active interest in ensuring that allocation limits set for those individual aquifers not be permissive in allowing continued expansion of water mining into higher quality water sources that attract commercial premiums in the, interna in, in the international bottled water market. Now what I mean by that is that if you individually define individual aquifers as separate water uh, bodies, then of course some of them will be deemed more attractive to uh, water mining companies in terms of their purity and availability. And we've seen that already in terms of the push to take water from a deep bore in Christchurch. So we support uh, the submission in principle, but we would urge caution on Council's part. Um, we haven't considered fully Council's proposal that he can remove the requirement to undertake well interference assessments uh, for group and community water supplies. And so we don't offer any view on that point at the moment. We make a general submission that existing rules within the Land and Water Regional Plan, if they're properly applied and interpreted by ECAN, should provide adequate safeguards against the continued expansion of water mining in Christchurch. However, we have concerns, and we think they're legitimate concerns, with the way in which those rules have been implied and interpreted. And because of that, we agree that greater clarity and certainty is required, and we'd urge Council to ensure that that occurs. We would like to see Council request ECAN to include the following further proposals in the review of the Land and Water Regional Plan. Uh, the first one is that the rules in the LWRP be amended to make it clear that any new activity that uses water also, sorry, and also requires the taking of water must be applied for as an application to both take and use water. So that would require that in every case where there's a change in use, say from a non-consumptive industrial activity to a fully consumptive water bottling activity, uh, that it must be assessed in regards or as an application also to take water so that it is assessed in terms of the allocation limits under the plan. That's consistent with the requirements in the LWRP and the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management, which support integrated management. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're seeing ECAN accept use-only consents, which appear to be designed to avoid restrictions in the plan around granting new water take consents. So that's something that needs to be addressed uh, in discussions with uh, ECAN. Secondly, we'd ask that Council make it clear that consents must state the purpose for which water is to be taken on the face of the permit itself rather than being put into the conditions of the consent. And this is to avoid the situation where a change in use, say to water bottling, can be implemented simply by an application to change the conditions of a consent 
rather than as a fresh application to take water so that again it's considered in terms of the allocation limits in the plan. Thirdly, we suggest that Council push at ECAN for new rules that make the taking of water for export water bottling a prohibited activity in the Christchurch West Melton Aquifer Zone or groundwater zone that won't affect existing water take consents for water bottling. It will uh, prohibit the taking of further water for water bottling once those consents expire. Obviously there may be a period during which um, they could be allowed to run on just for um, <coughs> normal commercial reasons, but it's important we think to draw a line underneath water bottling in Christchurch. We say that because um, Water mining, and particularly the likely expansion of water mining, poses a massive threat to the security of Christchurch's drinking water supply, particularly given the fact that the activity is fully consumptive and therefore necessarily it will result in a net drawdown of water that is available to the community in Christchurch. And there's no getting away from that, that's just a fact of life. When you undertake a fully consumptive activity, taking that much water, it must result in less water for the rest of Christchurch. And this is particularly the case given that we're now in a time of climate breakdown, we're in a climate of time of global water shortages and we're in a time of estimated population growth which has already been highlighted in Christchurch. Now that approach is consistent with the principle of sustainable management enshrined in the RMA. Finally, we suggest that Council consider making an application for a water conservation order on the whole of the Christchurch aquifer system in order to recognise and protect its high quality life giving properties and in recognition of its fundam fundamental importance to the health and wellbeing of our community. Now this might sound a little bit left field, um, water conservation orders haven't in New Zealand been uh, granted in respect to um, aquifers previously, however the government um, has accepted an application for a water conservation order onto Waikato Pupu Springs in Tasman. So it shows that there is potential to do that. Our argument is that uh, because of the um, special qualities of the water in the Christchurch aquifer, that that is a step that uh, Council should strongly push for. Our, of course, is happy to work with Council in respect to any of these proposals. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's certainly um, you know, opened up a, a, a line of thought that wasn't there for me before. Um, you know, that's obviously something that we would take advice on. Thank you. H has anyone got any questions? Uh, Yanni? Uh, not so much as a question, but just really wanted to thank you for your continued advocacy and um, challenge to what's happening. I, d I just wanted to, yeah, just say um, well done. Thank you very much for the work that you're doing in this space. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I think yeah, worth exploring the possibility of working together could be could be good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just you know, it, until you said that, it just never occurred to me that that was a a possibility. But um, it is such a a precious resource that uh, if there were some you know the, the the protection of a water conservation order available mm. to it, so. Um, certainly, we'll take we'll take advice from staff when they come down to talk to the paper. But um, yep. uh, we may need to explore that a little bit further. Pauline, left fieldy, and you may not oh, know sure. the answer to this, but where are the bottles made that the water goes into, assuming that they're plastic mm. ones? Yeah, they're all made in China. So we can import those back in. Yep. There's no local water used to make those, because I believe there's a lot of water required to make a plastic bottle as well. Ah, uh, there would be, yeah, there would be. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're made in China. All of the packaging, I understand, was made in China. Right, thank you. Is that correct? They are made on site, are they? Sorry. When we, when we exposed the fact that the, uh, those bottles and that packaging was mislabeled, the response was that um, this packaging was imported from China, so that's why I assumed that those um, bottles were made on site. Perhaps the packaging is made in China and the bottles are produced on site. So would that, the water required to make the bottles then is included in the, in the tank? Well, I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. Always looking at all right. Well, look, th thank you very much. It's much appreciated that um, you come along and uh, make a stand on an important issue. Thank you. Thank you.